right, and now we're finally going to blow shit up. Air ground rocket tutorial. Uh, I like how they set the date back in the 90s. Uh, let's see. Looks like I'm pretty hungry. Good morning, and welcome to the first ground attack lesson. Today you'll learn how to employ the ARAC 70B rocket pods. You're equipped with a full load of four pods of high explosive warhead rockets. Oh yeah. There is a target area south of POTI on a small island in the lake, which will be our first waypoint B1. Feel free to engage either the attitude or altitude hold. Maintain an airspeed between 600 and 900 kilometers per hour. First, we'll define the waypoint as a target waypoint. Set the data selector dial to tact. Set the input output selector to enter the code 9 by using the data pad. Press the B1 button to assign the code 9. Next, we'll disable the target motion measurement system for the site. This system, while maybe useful, requires special care when aiming, so for the purpose of today's training, we'll disable it. Uh. Make sure the data selector is set to tact and the input output switch is set to in. Enter the code 221. Press LS to enter the code into memory. Set the data selector switch to out and the data selector dial to AKTPOS. Set the weapon selector to mode attack. This will select most air to ground ordnance. Next, we'll confirm the altimeter setting. Since the site uses barometric altitude for calculating the slant range prior to engaging the radar ranging, a correct QFE altitude setting is necessary. Set the master mode selector to ANF. The rockets can also be used in mode NAV, but symbology will only appear after the fly towards the waypoint. Make sure it's still selected. The target will be on an island in the lake. If you're in mode ANF, the target position should be indicated by the target indicator ring in the heads-up display. Okay, so this little guy here is also our altitude. That's good to know. Let's see if I can go in low and do a pop-up and then dive attack. Kind of in the spirit of what the Vigan would do. Well, that's cool. I don't know what any of that HUD, HUD symbology means. I'm going to have to bust out that manual. The show. So I was talking about Chuck Yeager earlier, and uh, apparently he didn't like the Vigan at all. He said that he didn't like the cockpit, uh, something like that. I don't know, this is all secondhand. Um, uh, he has different experience, of course. That is a hell of a lot more, so I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that, because I'm having a good time with this. Incidentally, if you haven't read his autobiography, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. So just a, it's a good book. Uh, you can see how times have changed. And, uh, Set the trigger to unsafe. The safety lever on the control stick should be flipped up. Dive towards the target with between 10 and 30 degrees dive angle and place the sight dot on the target. Press the trigger when the time distance line in the bottom of the heads up display starts flashing. What? So trigger, not weapon release, right? Let's see. Make sure I get this bound correctly. Oh, the first world problem of having too many inputs to sort through. Okay. I would, oh yeah, first world problems. Let me get to that in a minute here. Time distance line in the bottom of the HUD starts flashing. I don't even see that one. 
So I'm going to go with what I think looks like a decent rocket attack. And then, uh... Oh, I see. Whoa! <laughs> After firing, pull up to evade. Set the trigger to safe. I think I fired a little too low, actually. Set the master mode selector to NAV. Well done. This concludes the rocket tutorial. Did I hit him? I'll tell you if it's well done or not, if there's anything dead. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we got some hits. Wow, that was... <laughs> I wasn't expecting quite so much black smoke in the canopy. Anyway, yeah, if you read about Chuck Yeager and what he used to do, he used to, the stuff he and his friends used to do back in the day would get a lot of people in a lot of trouble these days. And I think that, okay, there's different kinds of people in the world. Let, let's diverge quite a bit from subject material here. Not bad. I could have done that a little better, but that's what practice is for. Anyway, um, I was talking about, okay, two subjects and then we'll go on to the next video. Anyway, if you want to stop the video now and not hear my rambling, that's totally acceptable. And uh, I'll see you next mission. Uh, first off, you'll see first world problems. First world, third world, second world. Okay, so that, even though people use it, have come to use it completely differently, that is a Cold War term. First world was going to be NATO-aligned nations, right? So that would be first world. Second world would be Warsaw Pact-aligned nations. And third world is anybody else not aligned with either one. So as it happens, a lot of the third world tended to be a bit less developed. So that third world country saying came to be associated with countries that are underdeveloped. And that's not what it means. It means not taking sides in the Cold War. Just kind of a little little bit there. And then second, <laughs> I wanted to talk about uh, Chuck Yeager's book. All right, so um, the stuff he and his friends got up to would get a lot of people in, in jail. You know, you, you read about what they used to do, and it's just, first off, it's awesome. It's hilarious. But they used to, yeah, let's say... You have a beef with somebody and you get in a little fist fight, you settle your differences and you shake each other's hands afterwards. To me that sounds like a really cool, well not cool, but a much better way to settle disputes than a lot of people do. The end result is you shake hands afterwards, like, hey, I disagree with you, I disagree with you too. You get in a scrap, no hard feelings afterwards. To me that seems like something that has been lost. Anyway. I recommend the book because it brings a lot of that kind of stuff to light, how times have changed. And a lot of the stuff that Jaeger did, uh, both, on, both uh, on the ground and in the air, you can see he's a very direct kind of guy. In his words, he would bend rules into pretzels. And, um, and I think uh, he's also very direct and, you know, at some point in your life, it's time to take action, you know? There's different kinds of people in the world. There's the kind of people who like to plan things and uh, do careful, measured, you know, action and uh, think things through to the end, think about every possibility before they act. I kind of lean toward that a little bit. And then there's the kind of people who just don't do that and leap before they look sometimes. and. And that I'm not saying one is better or worse. I think you need both, actually. You know, if everybody was, you know, thinking things through academically and planning, of course that has huge benefits, and you know, you can foresee things that uh, maybe you wouldn't have if you act too soon. But then sometimes, you know, the time for just doing something is what you need. So I think you need both kinds of people, and um, by reading Jaeger's book and really anybody who you know, lived in that time period. You kind of get the impression that uh, the way things have been lately kind of favor, you know, they don't really allow people to do that kind of direct action approach sometimes, and it kind of penalizes them. And I, don't, I don't think that's cool. 
And I think there's many different styles of solving a problem. And some are better in certain situations than others. And to really have a good, balanced uh, team effort, you need many different perspectives. Not just the one that lines up with what you think. Anyway, we'll talk about that some other time. You're probably bored by now. I don't blame you. See you next mission.